Hello drone racers. This is the Ishin Lizard 95 and this is Betaflight 3.2. You need to combine these ASAP. This video is going to be a little bit weird because it was originally intended for something totally different. It was all about soft mounts. But then 3.2 came out and it's magic. It just fixed several issues that I was having and I would recommend going to it immediately with the release candidate. Now it is a release candidate, do this at your own risk. But the process of updating the lizard is a little unlike anything I've done before, so I wanted to record it so you can get yours updated too. My lizard has new soft mounts and new blades on it, and I've adjusted the pids a little bit, and I still have a lot of vibration. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna install Betaflight 3.2. 3.2 is in release candidate version now, and I wanna see how that does with the new filtering modes. So I'm in beta flight and the first thing I'm gonna do is take a backup of what I've got currently. I am gonna verify here the version. I'm on 3.1 currently, so it's pretty old. And the main thing you wanna notice is it is an omnibus flight controller. So make sure you note that when we're doing an upgrade. It's not what I normally see. I don't see a lot of these. So I'm gonna do a dump and take a backup of everything that I've got now, just in case I have any kind of problem. Save that to a local file. Now I've got everything backed up, I will disconnect. Now, updating the Lizard 95 is a little tricky, but it could be worse. Thankfully, you should be able to do it without touching the boot pins, and I'm gonna show you how. First, connect the USB port, and it will connect. Mine shows up up here as COM15. So we have COM15 there. And I'm gonna get a firmware flasher. This is an omnibus and I wanna choose omnibus 3.2. And I can see that because I've checked show unstable releases. So now I will load firmware, make sure I'm set on COM15, flash firmware. So what'll happen is here, you hear the quadcopter beeping a steady tone and that means it's in boot mode now and you're just gonna have to listen to that in the background, sorry. The problem is my COM15 is gone. So what I'm gonna do now is go back up here to the welcome screen. I'm gonna leave it in this tone and I'm gonna download the Zadig uh, Windows drivers. So you may have done this before. I've done this before on this, but I'm having to do it again for this model. I think just because it's a whole different series of flight controller than I've connected before. So we will launch Zadig. Now I want to go up here to options and list all devices and it's this STM32 bootloader. You want to just choose that and then load the Win USB driver. So we will replace driver. It was installed successfully. So that should be take care of Zadig. Now what I'll do is I'll disconnect it, reconnect and we'll do the same thing again. I don't want it to auto connect. So I have my omnibus, I'll choose my firmware again, I'll download it again, I'll flash firmware, it'll beep, but now it's going to stay and go ahead and load because I have the right drivers. Now it erased the config, it's flashing the config, and it's loading 3.2. After it's done, I should be able to connect and be in version 3.2. Go down here to CLI and check version 3.2, August 1st. So I'm gonna start by taking my config that I backed up and reapplying it, and that'll get a lot of my settings for me. Then I will save, which will reboot the uh, flight controller. Turn auto connect back on here. Now that did reset my UARTs and my receiver configuration and d -shot, and that got most of my settings back in place that I want. OSD is set back up. Modes are back in place and look good. So my receiver works and it's all set up and ready to go. I do need to center that. I just noticed my, uh, my centers are off, but that's a separate point. So now I'm on 3.2 and I'm gonna go down to other features and turn on anti-gravity and dynamic filter. Those are the two things that I am wanting in 3.2. Okay, those are saved. Now I wanna to go to PID tuning. In a previous video, I played with the notch filters and I'll link that up in the corner. But now it's a little easier than it was before. You're gonna to wanna to set this filter to PT1. I have already set 
notch filter one to zero, notch filter two to zero, and I'm gonna go ahead and set the D-term notch to zero. I did the others and I've never gotten hot motors, but make sure when you do this, your first flights, you just don't go out and go crazy. You come back and you check and make sure your motors are not hot. It's very, very important because you will burn up motors if this isn't working for some reason. So I'm gonna save. And now with dynamic filters, I'm gonna just check that one more time to make sure. Yep, dynamic filters are on. I wanna go see the magic. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that's pretty obvious is after doing the update, there is a million and a half additional OSD things. So I wanna turn those off, but I'm not going to, at the moment, I'm outside and I'm going to fly it. So let's see if this fixes the flight characteristics and just kind of ignore all the OSD. I kinda of like being able to see, whoa. Interesting. Is it smoother? Wow, it seems faster. It is, it is definitely smoother. It's not perfect. There's still a little bit of jello. Not perfect, but way better. C compass is wrong. <laughs> but look, the artificial horizon works. Okay, so that's new. But that's a 3.2 review change. And I, you know what I will say? It is enough better that I would say that works. It definitely made a very significant improvement in uh, in the flight characteristics here. Per cell voltage, wow. Okay, I'm liking 3.2 already. I want to go on that, but this is not really a 3.2 review. It's a, a Lizard review, but yeah, Lizard on 3.2 seems to be a winter winner. Now, now we've flown that long. We're gonna bring it back in and check the motors real fast. Try and bring it in fast so we can see how hot everything is. How are my motors? Oh, totally cool. Not, not even a little bit warm. Yeah, it's a winner. I like it. One thing I noticed after going to 3.2 is I was not able to go to rate mode. It would fall out of the sky and I didn't know what was going on. So I've gone back into beta flight here and I want to show you what happened when I go to 3.2 because make sure you check everything when this changes. See this? Fail safe for some reason is in aux 2. And here's my aux 2 switch. It's angle, horizon, fail safe? That doesn't make any sense. Well, what's happened is they've changed the order here somewhere. So what was air mode that I wanted enabled is now fail safe. So I'm gonna change this back so air mode is enabled. There we go. And that's the way I want it. So I will save that config. And you could see my fail safe was red up there. Now I'm not gonna fail safe as soon as I hit my switch. The other thing while we're here, go look at the OSD because it was crazy. Um, I do want RSSI, main battery voltage, crosshairs I do like, artificial horizon, it's nice they fixed it, but I don't want it. Horizon sidebars, timer one, timer two, fly mode, I do like fly mode, craft name, I do like that. I don't want my PIDs on here. It will be nice for troubleshooting and helping you guys be able to see what I've got in place, but for now, ESC, ESC, compass bar, no, 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 none of this is going to work. Main battery usage, we'll have to see what that is. Roll angle, no, 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 no. I do like the average cell voltage. That's a nice addition. Because when I tried the Wizard X220S on five cell, I had to do math real quick in my head to see what the voltage was. So having total and average voltage is actually kind of nice so I don't have to do the math in my head to know where we're at. Let's see. I do want warnings on, PID rate profile, I don't care about, and power, what is power? I don't know what that one is doing. So now, there we go, I have my RSSI, my voltage warnings, my name, what is this? Main battery usage, that, I wonder if that works. That could actually be pretty cool if it works. And then I wanted to turn flight time back on. Timer one, timer two. I like the center crosshair just to see where I'm going. So there's on fly minutes. Yeah, that should work. Let's try that. So already that looks much better. The battery indicator on the bottom is weird. I'll have to get used to that. But uh, all right, let's try and fly it now. Still have a little bit of jitter, but there we are in air mode slash rate mode. And it seems pretty darn good. Whoa. Don't have the strongest battery on here. This battery has been abused. This is the stock battery. But yeah, this seems really nice. PIDs seem to me to be tuned just a little bit. I'm using my old PIDs. I ought to just start over now in 3.2. But 
overall it's that is nice and smooth now that I'm going forward yeah that is definitely usable I love the new average battery voltage that is nice RSSI indicators nice um, battery utilization on the bottom I, I want to I don't know what that does overall so far though definitely a fan I've not been able to fly my lizard for a while and this just kind of took care of the last issues I had not been able to sort out flies definitely acceptably now wish I had this at the race last weekend might have actually done better yeah final verdict load 3.2 I love it on the lizard it's great and hopefully these instructions help you be able to do that if you found this useful leave a like down below and comment down below with which of the new OSD features you find most useful is it the automatically calculated single cell voltage I think I think that's my favorite is it maybe the working artificial horizon? They may have fixed that in a other version here recently, but it was pretty bad on the original stock. And a second comment option, if you installed 3.2 but you have a problem, let me know so we can let people know if maybe they shouldn't do this. I've only had three or four flights on this after loading the beta. It's been great for me, but if there's a problem, we ought to let people know. And until next time, remember, beta flight 3.2, it's a game changer.